everyone and welcome to this week's Scuba Tube. Uh, in today's show, we're going to be talking about diver Jason Eilley, uh, a lion helmet. Yep. Uh, NASA, apparently, yeah. uh, and Mexico expanding its marine park, and plenty of other stories. So let's dive straight into the news. So a living fossil, a frilled shark, has been captured in Portugal. Uh, this species of shark has been given the nickname the living fossil. Um, this is mainly because of several primitive features that have survived for millions of years. Uh, the male shark is 1.5 meters in length. So I said, fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and was fished out of the water at 700 meters deep. Uh, at first, the trawler men who caught it didn't really know what it was, because why would they? Yeah. Uh, they, uh, they then handed it over to the IPMA, uh, and they recorded the shark as a frilled shark. Frilled is a hard word to say. Frilled. frilled. Now, why do you reckon you got the story? Uh, so now these sharks do swim through a lot of waters, like in uh, sort of Spain, Scotland, Canary Islands. All and... those warm places. Yeah. Scotland. Well, the Canaries must be all right. Mm. Um, uh, and up in Norway as well. Uh, but they mainly stick to the deep, deep ocean. So catching one is incredibly hard. You either have like a really, really long line <laughs> yeah. with a hook on it. Um, <laughs> But that just that actually goes to show how deep the trawlers are going now, which is bad. 700 meters. No. Uh, so uh, so they're now going into uh, or they're now going to study the living fossil uh, to understand more about the creature. It's um, an ugly thing. It's really weird. All those teeth. Yeah. Yeah. The other way. one is the coelacanth, which yeah. is like a living fossil. And yeah, deep deep down, they they don't. They're not really affected by us or any kind of changes up here. So, um, yeah, if it worked a few hundred million years ago, still works now. Yeah. yeah. Lion helmets. So diving archaeologists have found a rather rare piece of history-ish. Uh, whilst diving off the coast of Sicily uh, in an area that's thought to have a massive battle took place back in 241 BCE, before Christ's emo phase, uh, they have... <laughs> They have found uh, what's to be believed a lion helmet, it's to believe to be as a lion's helmet. So these helmets were actually worn by Rome's, I cannot pronounce that word, Praetorian. Praetorian guards, uh, which are the actual personal bodyguards of the emperor. So finding them in the dive site is a pretty big deal, apparently. So they're now studying the helmet to find out more about the precise dates of the battle, who was there, and all that sort of thing. So, okay. funny story is, though, these types of helmets were also worn by mercenaries, which were hired by the people who were fighting the Romans. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of work that's got to go into it. Yeah, it's, it's semi confirmed. Yeah. It's cool to see they've got all, you know, scouring it. They've got obviously all the artifacts, bottles, all the standard stuff that you find on ships and yeah, stuff like bits that. Yeah, bits and bobs. Other weapons and stuff like that. But this, this helmet oh, apparently know. just creeping up. For its time, for the battle, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool rare find. So yeah, they can study more into it. Cool, yeah. yeah. Uh, so a marine park expansion. So Mexico has announced that it will be expanding the Revillagigedos Marine Park. Spot on. Probably. My inner Mexican was yes. <laughs> uh, the, the park will now cover 57,000 square miles. Square miles or meters? Miles, according to the article, miles. Miles. Massive. Good lord. Uh, so uh, protecting all, um, all uh, what was in it. So yeah, protecting everything that's in it. So from the island life to the marine life in the water, everything is protected. Okay, that's acceptable. Yeah. So everything. <laughs> it, Mark says you can do it now, guys. <laughs> it is acceptable. Uh, so just last year, the site was declared a World Heritage Site. Uh, so the expansion is a pretty big deal to marine life. The park has unique biodiversity, uh, including sharks, whales, rays, to name a few. Uh, the goal was to maximize the site as much as possible, uh, sort of as much as they could, under the World Heritage Site to protect ocean life, and it looks like it's been pulled off pretty nicely. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, because there was the one out in um, in Hawaii that um, Obama did yeah. not that long ago, or pretty soon, yeah, just as he was coming up to the end of his term. Yeah, he just said, uh, "Right, he's like, right, all of this area, yeah, is protected." They got that in Canada as well. They're trying to get twenty percent of their ocean protected. If they can, they can use oil. Still <laughs> <laughs> fish and swim in that one, but they don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, they're they're trying. They're trying. 
Uh, also, under World Heritage Law, no hotels or facilities can be constructed on any of the islands in the park, meaning that no one will be able to exploit the land and the ocean. Yeah, so they're not allowed, you're not allowed fishing on there, you're not allowed to have, like, just build everything. Bit, yeah, so literally you can't even go, like, have a little depot for your fishing boats or anything yeah. like that. Absolutely nothing. And I think if there's anything that's there, they clean it all out and then you can't, you can't touch upon it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it right. is, it's really good. Uh, okay guys, have you seen our latest video, 10 Weirdest Dive Suits? It popped up on our channel on Friday, and oh boy, there are some weird suits out there. Uh, you should definitely go check it out. Uh, we're gonna put a link somewhere no. in the description. No, no we're not allowed we can't to do that anymore. That, no. I wondered why it wasn't in there. Underwater funny, so diver and photographer Jason Eiley has taken to the water with his camera. But rather than just taking pictures of the natural wonders of the ocean, he's doing something, well, it's a little bit weird, a bit funny. Yeah. I quite like it. Whilst diving, uh, Jason took small models with him and arranged them on the seabed to mimic everyday life. So the pictures range from a soldier's fighting off a sea urchin, oh, that's quite good, uh, a man in his camper van sitting up next door to a hermit crab, <laughs> and my personal favourite, a Spanish bullfighter trying to pick a fight with the shark. It <laughs> is brilliant. <laughs> so getting these shots must have taken Jason ages to set up, um, and so kudos to you for having the time and the patience to do that. Yeah, it's really cool. You see, the, you always see that the classic pictures, don't get me wrong, it's obviously stunning. You see the coral reefs and stuff. Just yeah. to have a little bit of fun in there though. It's, it's, yeah, it's usually done on land. He's got like um, construction crews and whatnot, yeah. just on a tiny bit of pavement. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now he's turned into underwater, which yeah. is cool. It is, yeah, yeah it's cool. Uh, apparently dolphins are beating up porpoises. Ding, ding. Yeah. Uh, so the Scottish Marine Animal Stranding Scheme last month had, yeah, uh, had to deal with 63 beached animals last month, with 16 of them being uh, harbour porpoises alone. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, so now while the odd dead porpoise isn't that unusual, uh, one of them was savagely killed, they say. Savagely killed. Savagely killed. Okay. Um, under closer examination, the report filed by SMAS. Okay. Well, I'm not going to say the Scottish Marine something, 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 something. It's too late, you really have. Um, stated that the porpoise was in good nutritional condition. It was uh, tasty. Yeah, it, <laughs> it had been recently, or it had recently fed. Um, several ribs were fractured, uh, which damaged the liver and actually punctured the heart. Poor dude. Which is what they figure is the cause of death. Uh, there were also numerous rake marks uh, with associated bruising all over the body, uh, which measured and uh, sort of incriminate bottlenose dolphins, unfortunately. So that's who they figured did it. Um, but this is in no small way an isolated case, as the number one cause for reported porpoise strandings in Scotland is dolphin abuse, apparently. Dolphin abuse. Yeah, apparently they even take on like minky whales or something. They, they're like really either like hyper-territorial or just hate other things. Well, it, you know, it's because they won't say his name. But I'm <laughs> say my name, what's my name? <laughs> it's taking his territory. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Bullying. I've never noticed uh, dolphins to be bullies. No, but um, but the the Scottish like national heritage is saying how the the dolphins and the porpoises attract so much tourism. Mm. They bring in I forget the number like forty thousand pounds a year or something. Um, and now that they're just beating one another up, it's kind of like, ooh. But what are you gonna do? Stop it. Kill them all, and then put fake ones in poly polystyrene dolphins. Yeah, they make the noise. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when they rub up against one. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Anyway, guys, NASA is recruiting. So if you want a job at NASA to help track melting Arctic sea ice, you're in luck. That's if you're a narwhal. <laughs> so NASA's latest, uh, NASA, NASA, T. Finchon, <laughs> NASA's latest project, Ocean Melting Greenland, or OMG for short. <laughs> See what they did there, very well. They <laughs> use planes, they use ships, and obviously, and they use floating tech to study melting ice. Cool. But now they're adding narwhal, narwhals to that list. <laughs> So they will use the narwhals to be the oceanographers in this latest project. What with little like tape measures up there. <laughs> <laughs> so what they're going to do, they're going to track the ocean. Uh, each, uh, each, sorry, each narwhal will have a tracker and when they go to, you know, dive in the deep oceans, it's going to obviously record the ocean temperature at different depths. Okay. So while they're using the narwhals, it's for one simple reason, it's cheap. 
<laughs> it's cheaper than uh, it's cheaper to do that than to find a nar. Uh, it's cheaper to find a narwhal. Sorry, than to ta and to tag it to let them do the work than say get a scuba scuba diver, get a drone, get the ships, and then obviously have certain people. It's, it's probably quicker as well to do. So yeah. so yeah, so just getting them to kind of do what they do anyway, it works. The only difficult is, thing is, is that narwhals can be a bit hard to, to, to capture and to tag. So as long as they do that, they'll be all right. Yeah, I mean, it's not as if they're, they're asking them to do something specific, like swim to the bottom of this iceberg and stay there and then come back up. Yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, we're just gonna tag you and as you do your usual Literally narwhal Literally every, every depth or whatever, or every insignificant, uh, significant depth, it's they're recorded. just tracking the, the temperature of the water and then they're seeing that, putting that in their database and seeing how well yeah. that's contributing to melting ice. Yeah. But uh, it also obviously helps track the habits of the narwhals as well. Yeah. So hopefully we can find out even more about these creatures. So actually it's a win-win. So they're helping us track water temperatures in the Arctic, Antarctic or whatever, yeah. and then obviously now we're understanding them a lot more as well because they're so shy. And yeah. Recluse. Obviously there was a lot of them and then, you know, humanity decided, it's like, oh, let's kill them because they're demons or for whatever reason. <laughs> they have oil in them. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. It makes sense. There's a lot more of that kind of tracking and sort of learning more, so they can just create this global database of water temperatures and all that kind yeah, of well, stuff. Well, you can do the normal diving. You can buy the spell. I'm pretty sure we've done it in a weird yeah. Wednesday or something where you can buy a rig and you can attach that to your BCT, mm. and that just tracks all the, the temperatures as well. So even us humans are going to be doing it, us divers are going to be doing it as well. So, <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Uh, and that's it for this week's show, unfortunately. Uh, join us next week for Weird Wednesday, mm. where we may be joined by a special guest. It's not James, he's just special. Um, <laughs> I had to put that in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, and safe diving. Bye.